When modeling in SOLIDWORKS, you often want to add rounded or angled edges to the part. The feature used for this is called the fillet feature and the chamfer feature. Fillets create a rounded edge by removing material and smoothing out the edge. Chamfers are done in a similar way but provide an angled edge. There are some general rules to keep in mind when using these features. Number one, leave cosmetic fillets until the end of the modeling process. Number two, try to number two, try and create multiple fillets in the same command if they have the same radius. Number three, when you need fillets with different radiuses, it's often best to create the fillets with the largest radiuses first and then work down from that. And finally, number four, the order in which you create fillets is important, as when you're creating fillets, it's also creating additional surface faces, which can then be used in turn to make more filleted edges. In this lesson, we'll use the fillet feature tool to create fillets on this part, and then we'll move on to another part to create some chamfer features. As always, don't forget you can find the exercise files in the description of this video. These files are created in SOLIDWORKS 2019, so you'll need 2019 or newer to actually open these files. There are two files for each part. One is the beginning stage and the second part is the finishing stage. So you can check what it should look like at a completed stage compared to the beginning stage of the lesson. You can start the fillet feature command in three different ways. First, you can go from the features tab in the command manager and then click on fillet. You can go to the insert menu and then go to features and fillet round. And finally, right clicking on an edge of the model, you can then select fillet. So let's start the fillet command by the first method of the features tab in the command manager and clicking on fillet. Before we begin adding fillets to the edges, I'll first explain some of the options available in the property manager on the left. First, let's make sure the option is set to manual. Under that, we have the fillet type and we have a few selections available here. So the first one is constant size fillet. Then we have variable size fillet, face fillet, and full round fillet. Each of these will control the fillet in different ways. So it's worth playing around with them, but I'll show you a little bit more in depth on each one. Before we go into detail on each one of the fillet types, we'll cover a few more of the options. Again, we see the tangent propagation option. This allows for all edges tangent to the selected edge of face to be filleted. Below this are some options for the preview. We have a full preview, which is going to show a preview of the fillet on every edge you select. Then there is the partial preview, which will only show the preview on the first edge that you select. And we finally have the no preview, which is obviously not going to show any preview of the filleted edge in the graphics window area. For this section, we are going to make sure that tangent propagation is selected and full preview is enabled. Also down the bottom of these options, you'll see fillet options. And if you click on that to expand, there are two more options to enable in here. They should be on by default, but they should be select through faces and keep features. So make sure those two are ticked. With our options set, we can now begin selecting the edges that we want to fill it. As we selected the select through faces option, you'll notice that I can actually click on lines that are hidden behind the model face. So if I wanted to click on this back edge here, I actually can pick that line through the face by just hovering my mouse over the correct area. So that is what select through faces do. It can just make it a little bit easier for selecting faces behind things instead of having to rotate the model around and pick different areas. Whenever you select an edge by clicking on it, you'll notice a menu that pops up. This allows you a quick access menu of selecting different edges that are kind of related to the original edge you pick. So as you just hover your mouse over and move it over these different options, it's going to give you a preview of the additional edges that it may select. So if we go to the connected to start virtual face, it's going to pick seven edges. So we'll just pick that. And as you can see in the preview, it is selecting the original edge plus these edges inside and outside and also on the bottom. We want these seven edges selected, but we don't want these two bottom edges selected. And therefore at any time you can actually deselect edges simply by clicking on them again. 
You'll also notice this little call out that is coming out and you can move this around if you wish to by clicking and dragging. This is the radius for the fillet. So you can change the radius either by updating it in here and we can change it to five millimeters or you can change it in the fillet parameters over in the left hand panel. Before we finalize this fillet, we also want these inside edges to be filleted with the same radius of five millimeters. So clicking on this, it will select the rest of the loop because of that tangent propagation that we announced enabled earlier. With all the edges we want selected, we can just click on OK, or as I mentioned in a previous video, you can actually right click and go to OK to finish the feature. So what if I wanted to make an edit to that fillet radius? Well, as with the same thing with other features, you can simply click on the fillet and go to edit feature, and then you can change the radius either through the callout or through the fillet parameters. And let's just change that to 2.5 mils. Right click, go OK, and you can see all the fillets have actually updated to the 2.5 millimeters. That is because all the edges that you select that create that fillet are controlled by that one radius. So in saying that, we want to finish this model by adding a fillet to the rest of the edges, but we want it to be a larger fillet. We want this fillet to be five millimeters. So that's why we need to create yet another filleted feature. Going back to our fillet, we want to have the fillet parameter set to five millimeters. And this time we want to click on this top edge. And you'll notice that it is now selecting a loop all the way through. And that is because of, again, the tangent propagation due to the first fillet we created, it has actually created these lines to be tangent to each other and therefore created a loop within it. So we want both this top edge and this top edge, which is going to do the loop on the other side, checking that our radius is five millimeters, right click and go OK. Control seven to go back to an isometric view. This completes adding all the fillets to this part. Next, we'll move on to the second part, which we will use for creating chamfers. Here we have a new part that we want to add some chamfers to. The chamfer tool can be found in the three ways that are similar to the fillet tool. The only difference with the first one is that in the features tab in the command manager, you can find it by clicking on the arrow of fillet and finding the chamfer there. The other ways such as the insert, features and chamfer, you can see here it has its own individual selection. And same when you right click on an edge, you can also click on chamfer. So let's start a chamfer by clicking on that arrow for the fillet and selecting chamfer. Similar to the fillet feature tool, we have options on the side here to control how the chamfer behaves. Again, we have a variety of chamfer types that we can select from. These are the angle distance, distance distance, vertex, offset face, and face face. Continuing through the options in the property manager, we also have tangent propagation, the three types of preview options, and a section for parameters which will control the distance and angles that you select. And finally, the chamfer options, similar to the fillet feature, has both the select through faces option and the keep features option. Let's take a closer look at each of the chamfer types. The angle distance type specifies how far away from the edge to begin the chamfer and at what angle the chamfer should cut at. To demonstrate this, we'll use a distance of five millimeters with an angle of 30 degrees. We will then select these six top edges of the part. So looking at the preview, you can see what the chamfer will look like using that five millimeter and 30 degree angle. We can flip the direction of this by clicking the flip direction. But if we do that, it's going to make the chamfer a little too close to this hole cutout. So we're going to go back and disable that. The distance distance type specifies how far away the two resulting edges of the chamfer should be away from the selected edge. For this particular chamfer type, the chamfer parameters has two options, asymmetric and asymmetric. By selecting the asymmetric, you are able to specify two different distances. So let's set the first one to five millimeters and then the second one to 2.5. We don't have an option to reverse the directions here. So to change this around, we would need to just change the values in the parameter boxes. Next, the offset face chamfer is defined by offsetting the faces that form the selected edge and creates the chamfer based on the intersection of those offsets. 
This option is especially helpful for non-planar faces as it will generate more predictable results. The face-face chamfer requires faces rather than edges to create and has expanded parameter options to create more specialized chamfers. Let's switch back to the distance-distance chamfer and clear the selections by right-clicking in the items to chamfer dialog box and going to clear selections. Now I can show you the last chamfer type which is vertex. This chamfer type uses a single point as the selection and uses three distant values to define its shape. So if I select the vertex or like a corner point, you can see it's creating a chamfered cut on that corner. And we have three options here to control how that chamfer will look. To finish this part model, let's clear the selections again and go back to our distance distance type. Make sure symmetric is enabled and we will set the distance to three millimeters. Reselect the six top edges of the part and then you can either click on the green check but as I've been promoting in these lessons recently you can just right click and go to OK to finish the feature. So that is how you create fillets and chamfer features in your model. That is the end of the lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and let's move on to the next lesson.